The Negroni cocktail is not only one of the best cocktails that the 20th century brought us, but it also is actually very well documented. It's safe to say that the Negroni is 100% Fiorentino, meaning from Firenze or Florence in Italy. And the reason why we say that was because the bartender that first mixed it, Fosco Scarcelli, was from Firenze, born and raised. The customer that first asked for it was Count Attilio Negroni, a larger than life, barfly, aristocrat, playboy, was born and raised in Firenze. And the bar where it was created, the Cafe Casoni, was a historical bar from Firenze. And so literally, this is 100% Florence. Um, it's, it's important to point out that the Negroni was a variation of a drink that was the Americano. And the Americano was basically Campari, sweet vermouth, and soda. The way the Americano took its name was from a drink called the Milano Torino which was also known as the Mito, Il Mito. And it was called Mito because the Campari was from Milano and the sweet vermouth was from Torino. Add a little bit of soda water. However, when Florence became the capital of Italy, many tourists came to visit it. And many public offices and government offices opened in Italy, which brought so many tourists. It brought public lighting, which made the streets of Florence safer, more fun, and of course, all the tea shops, espresso shops, lemonade stands adapted and became more bar-like cafes. So when the American tourists started drinking the, American, the Milano Torino, they fell in love with it and they ordered it. And so it was very simple, the transition between calling it the Milano Torino to, hey, un altro drink per l'americano. So it, from there, it just became un americano. And that's how it all happened. Now, the Milano Torino, which brought us the americano, was nothing more than a spin-off of another drink called il Torino Milano, il Tommy. And the Torino Milano was made with an Amaro from Torino, Cora, and of course, um, Campari from Milano. So these simple variations are what brought us to the Negroni. Now, the most fascinating, I think, as a bartender, the most fascinating story behind the Negroni was actually the relationship or the collaboration between the bartender and his guest. Because Fosco, the bartender, met Count Negroni when he was 20. And they developed an extremely nice relationship, a very friendly relationship. And at one point, when Count Negroni came back from one of his travels to England, he asks Fosco to irrubostire, literally to toughen up his Americano with some gin, because he had just come back from England. Fosco, arguably being a very, very smart bartender, could only replace one ingredient, and that was the soda water. So he replaces the soda water with the gin, that way this drink, always had the same color. But the coincidence here is even greater than that. When you think about it, London Dry Gin, or gin in general, has the juniper berry, and the juniper berry flourishes in Florence, all of Tuscany. And so the match of putting a gin inside of an Americano was more than just a, oh, let's add a little bit of this in there. It was actually what I would like to consider kind of a genetic uh, match between the existing Americano and adding gin to it. And that's how the Negroni was born. The Negroni was adapted and embraced by many other cafes in Florence, including Il, Il Giacosa, which ended up buying Cazzoni a few years later, Il Doni, uh, Il Gambrinus, and another uh, important one, which was Il Grand Hotel. And Il Grand Hotel was also a place where Count Negroni would always go and drink his Negronis. And it is said, although we weren't there, we don't know, that this is where they added the orange instead of the lemon in order to differentiate a Americano on a bar counter versus a Negroni on the bar counter. Now, there was, lemon, there was never a lemon slice inside of an Americano. It was just a lemon peel because the acid of the lemon was too much. But the lemon peel was in the Americano, whereas now the orange slice, or half the orange slice, made its way into the Negroni. 
And that is how the Negroni was born. Now, as the tourists would go to the Grand Hotel and drink the Negroni, it made its way to England and it made its way to America, and the rest is history. Salute! Cent'anni, buonissimo, e nuscassuati.